Here we're looking at a hypothesis testing problem from WebWork. Somebody's making a claim here. They're claiming that the mean is equal to 2.24. Okay, the alternative hypothesis, that's how you, you that's how, the, the null hypothesis always includes some claim about something being equal. So the alternative the uh, null hypothesis is that the mean is 2.24. That's how you decide what the the uh, null hypothesis is. It always includes a, an equal. But as soon as you have one hypothesis, there is an alternative hypothesis. The alternative hypothesis that we're testing against is that mu is greater than 2.24. Now what that means is that the alternative hypothesis was really saying that mu is less than or equal to 2.24. That's not always noted, but because the alternative hypothesis is saying this, this is really what we're meaning here. The important thing is that the null hypothesis always includes equal to. So we're testing the null hypothesis that this is equal to something. Because of this sample size is fairly large, we could use the central limit theorem. And that would mean that the distribution of the sample means would be the same as the distribution, uh, as the mean of the original population. So this is a 2.24. It would be nice to know something about the standard deviation of the distribution of sample means. We don't. The best that we know is that when we take this sample, we get a standard deviation of the sample. The S is going to be, let me see what that was, uh, 0 0.5. Okay. So what we're going to do is use that as our estimate for the standard deviation over here. We didn't know what it was, but we're going to estimate it to be 0 0.5. Then with that estimate, it means that this dis, the, the standard deviation of here could be estimated as 0 0.5 divided by, divided by the square root of 71. Because we had to use this estimate, when we standardized this distribution, we were saying that this mean was going to be the same as this mean over here. When we standardize this distribution, we'll need to use a t distribution instead of a z distribution. Remember that a t distribution looks like this. It's mounted, it's symmetrical, its mean is zero, and its standard deviation is dependent upon the degree of freedom. In this case, the degree of freedom is 70. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. We're testing to see if if this null hypothesis that the mean is 2.24 is uh, is correct. We're testing it against the alternative hypothesis that mu is greater than 2.24. So all of the alpha will go up in this right side because of the alternative hypothesis. So this needs to be 0 0.01. Now when we do our test, we take a sample and we find out that our sample, the mean of our sample is really up here. Uh, the mean of the sample is 2.39. Okay, now that in a sense is kind of supporting the alternative hypothesis, isn't it? Because the alternative hypothesis is saying that the mean is bigger than 2.24. Our sample got a mean of bigger than 2.24. The question is, is it far enough bigger to reject this null hypothesis or is it so close that it could have easily happened just by probability that it was, that it was there? So we're going to test that in the following way. We're going to come down here and find out this t value right here so that 0 0.01 the population is above there. We'll be able to do that easily with a uh, with 
uh, using R. We'll just use a QT. If this is 0 0.1, then the part below here is 1 minus 0 0.1. So we're looking at the quantile and the T distribution where the area to the left is 1 minus 0 0.1 with a degree of freedom of 70. So that value is going to be our critical value. We'll the test statistic is going to come from this piece of information. We just need to move that down to the T test, which is easy to do. We just take the X bar, which is 2.39, minus the mu of the X bars, that's 2.24, and divide that by the standard deviation here, uh, divided by the sigma of the X bars. Okay, we're doing that over here in in uh, R. We're taking the 2.39 minus the mean divided by the standard deviation of this distribution, and that's going to be the test statistic. If that ends up being being here too close to zero, then we're going to fail to reject the null hypothesis. If it ends up being over in here in the critical region, then we will reject the null hypothesis. Okay, hope that helps.